We're back with quite a bit to talk about. Quite a bit has happened since last time. Plus, I forgot to include certain details of the process I went through. So where are we now? Well, just sit back and buckle up because it's time. I've been hard at work designing, coding, and going deeper on this, so let's just get into it already. So, where did we leave off last time? Character intros, designs, ability ID- CHOSEN! You forgot a bunch of shit in the last video about the designs. You thought I wouldn't notice? Oh yeah, the designs. I completely forgot to speak about the original 32-bit sprites in the last video. <laughs> Okay, so the original designs. Only a few of you may know about these, but I think they're a cool piece of cut content. Basically, in the original build of the game in RPG Architect, if you remember that from the last video, I wanted some form of 3D effects to be used, but eventually scrapped the idea for a plethora of reasons, mainly being complicated seeming, and also, once again, RPG Architect being overall complicated. Nevertheless, I made these designs for that iteration in 32 bits rather than 16 like the current sprites. I later made the new design so that everything would be pixel consistent between the tile set and the characters, so the game would flow a little better. Also, I made Kenzo look way different because I didn't want to attempt making a character with medium length hair in that style. Though the new Kenzo is much more faithful to his original design anyways, so nothing is really being lost with this one being cut. Maybe I could use this character in the future, I don't know, comment below if you have any ideas. All the rest of the characters are widely unchanged, aside from the fact that in the 32-bit versions they use three different shading colors instead of the standard two I've been using for the new sprite style, except for certain areas like Becky's hair. Oh yeah, also, uh, cut character, Zuna. He hasn't really made his appearance in the new style yet. He was a player character that replaced Kenzo for a few sessions because of IRL things. I originally wanted him playable in this game too, but I don't think in retrospect he actually meshes well with the party, so I might relegate him to like a side character or easter egg of some sort. Again, comment below if you have any fun ideas I didn't say here. And the final thing I forgot to mention in the last video is that the current title is a working title. Heroes of the Multiverse has a good chance of being the final title I'll go with, but uh, I'm also open to other cool ideas you may have. So yeah, feel free to do that. So now, the new stuff. We have a lot to cover, so let's get started with... Okay, so this is a weird one. Animation. I definitely made a lot of progress in since last time. Uh, in the last video, I showed a fully animated Hunter, and now everyone is fully animated. I originally didn't like how Hunter's walk cycle looked different from Cyan's walk cycle when I made hers originally. Then I thought about it a bit more, and a thought popped into my head about how it would work, or an explanation for it in universe. Everyone walks differently in real life, so why not just say that and apply it to the game? I mean, it definitely doesn't look bad in Engine, at least. That was my main concern. Some characters have more or less frames than others because of this. I also workshopped a few ideas and even redid some animations while working, and came up with these ones as the final sets. Aubrey also levitates with her book following her because I thought that fit her character the best. In terms of other animation progress, I fixed a bug in Hunter's animations playing, and that's all the news on that front. But wait! Chosen! There's so much more new in this build you haven't mentioned yet. Well, Mr. Viewer, let's get into... Programming! There's been a lot under this umbrella, and I've been really, really happy with the progress I've been making. I didn't touch on it very much in the last video because I wanted to be brief with my explanation. So let's get into it here. I originally started the project in GML Visual after dishing the RBG Architect build instead of the typical language. I thought it would be easier on my scratch brain. I was wrong! GML Visual has got to be one of the worst visual code editors I've ever used, so I quickly scrapped that and restarted development for the second time, keeping certain salvageable elements of the visual build. Hell, I even I even scrapped and redid the movement on Hunter himself just because I wasn't happy with how it worked in visual. I'm sure by now you've noticed the following party member system I implemented. If I had to tell you what fresh hell of programming I had to go through to just to make those, we'd be here all day. But at least programming them all helped me learn out a lot about the new language that I'm working with. So I got that done, redid the collision system also because I wasn't satisfying with how the hitboxes functioned normally. And here's some quick fire development quirks I ran into also. When adding in all the characters, they all defaulted to cyan animations because she was the one that they were based off in their code base. I just thought it was funny that Hunter had four cyans following after. Oh yeah, uh, I created a vortex that instantly caused the game to encounter a fatal error. That was fun. Uh, it took me a while to solve, but uh, it was definitely something. Also, I remade the bushes in their collision. Uh, you can see the difference in between builds. They were originally part of the tile set, but then I made them into their own objects so that they could be, like, passed in front of and behind. 
I also made this tile set for the intro room, this entire room out of it also, that you've been seeing throughout the video. Uh, so let's get into the actual design work of art design and other miscellaneous things. Okay, so, in the last video, I showed a bunch of supporting character designs that I'm still really happy with those. But in the time since, I have also made some more new designs for NPCs and new concepts. One such concept is an NPC named Belle after a friend's OC of the same name. Current idea is for her to be a magical entity that travels through the realms to buy objects that people are about to throw away to satisfy her own kleptomania and desire to collect things from all over. She'll also sell you items that she doesn't see personal value in for players to buy. I think that there's real potential in this idea and it could be a fun way to like see how players will interact with a character like this and now let's get into some more fun designs and concepts enemies they populate any good rpg game so what are the enemies in this game going to be like well we'll definitely have some new ones in store that i haven't quite touched on in actual design yet but let's start with the familiar some will definitely be ones you've seen before and i wanted to put spins on anything familiar i would be using one such example of this is the goblin enemies yes and it's it's goblins yep uh all right so we obviously have the standard old normal goblin this one goes without any real explanation it's just a just a thing you can punch then we have uh this very strong looking goblin that is basically a beefier version of the normal goblin that'll hit harder and maybe have a little bit less movement range in the actual tactical rpg aspect the magic goblin that can attack from a range and also use debuffing spells and aoe attacks the design definitely came first so i'll be glad to hear your ideas on this one because i'm a little lacking the leader goblin it's a tougher basic one that if killed will send any other goblins on the stage into an enraged state and also buff them in certain ways not sure on the buffs yet but it does seem like a pretty good idea we have the brutish hobgoblin it's a much rarer more feral type of goblin that is very aggressive and can kill even the strongest of adventure if they're not careful with their surprising amount of intellect and finally for now we have the bard goblin wielding a ukulele it plays to support allies or debuff enemies with powerful magic i really like how all these designs came out and cannot wait to adapt them into actually fightable enemies uh if you guys have any other ideas you think i might like be sure to comment them uh i also drew some concept art for the room after this house room that you've been seeing throughout the video yes this room is eventually gonna have multiple houses also here's an early stage version of the trash child in her natural habitat really thrilling stuff a lot has happened in the time between the first devlog and this one i reached 100 subs i saw some of the highest view counts ever on my channel and i helped a friend edit a video for their channel but my mission still stays the same make an amazing game you can all enjoy and that i can be proud of for all leasing i wouldn't be surprised if at this rate i had a prototype done by march but i can't make any promises on that thank you to everyone for subscribing and if you haven't already please do so that you can be notified when the next devlog releases and just to support me really if you want more extensive progress updates while they're going on then if you're able donate to my patreon uh the lowest tier will give you access to posts and special discord role in my new server i'll see you all in the next one thanks for watching